So today we're going to take a look at a four centimeter tall object, which has been placed 15 centimeters in front of a convex lens, which has a focal length of five centimeters. And today we're going to draw a ray tracing diagram in order to determine the location of the image, which is formed by this lens. We're also going to go through and use the lens equation as well as the magnification equation in order to calculate where we should see the image as well as its magnification and the image height. Now, typically when doing a ray tracing diagram, we wouldn't show the actual curvature of the lens. Uh, we would simply put these little arrows on the end to show that the lens bulges outward and is convex. So to start our ray tracing diagram, just like we would a ray tracing diagram for a mirror, we're gonna first draw our principal ray coming from the top of this object toward the lens. Now we're dealing with a lens. So once this principal ray comes in parallel to the principal axis and strikes the lens, it's not going to bounce off of the lens like it would with a mirror, it's going to pass through the lens. And when it does that, because it's traveling parallel to the principal axis, it is going to bend and travel through the focal point. Like this. Next, we're gonna talk about the center ray. Now a lens has no center of curvature to speak of, so when dealing with a lens, our center ray actually just passes through the center of the lens. That is to say where the lens meets the principal axis. And when that ray passes through the center point of the lens, it is not going to be bent at all. So starting at the top of our object, running through the center of the lens, we see this, a ray which is passed through the lens without being bent at all. And last, we're gonna deal with our focal ray. Now, because there's two focal rays for a lens, we have to be a little bit careful with this. When our principal ray came toward the lens and struck the lens, it was bent toward the focal point. Now, when dealing with a focal ray, we're gonna start with a ray on top of this object, and it's going to pass through this other focal point. And when this ray strikes the lens, it is going to be bent so that it travels past the lens parallel to the primary axis. And this position right here, where the three refracted rays converge, is where our image will form. Now that we've drawn a ray tracing diagram, I want to go through and calculate where this image should be showing up. I also want to work out the magnification and the height of the image. So I'll first use the thin lens equation in order to determine the position of the image. Now in this problem, the focal length is five centimeters. The object distance is 15 centimeters. And we're solving for DI. So the big difference in calculations between dealing with lenses and mirrors is how we handle positive and negative values. You'll notice when I calculated the image position here, I used a positive five centimeters for the focal length. Even though there's a focal point both here and here for this lens. When dealing with a mirror, there's a positive and a negative side of the mirror, the positive side being the side which the object is on. When dealing with a lens, that doesn't hold true. In order to determine whether the focal length is positive or negative, we need to understand what type of lens we're dealing with. When dealing with a convex lens like this, the focal length is positive. And because the focal length is positive, you'll notice that it gave us a positive image distance. Now that might seem strange since the image is on the opposite side of the lens from the object, which we said had a positive position. But when dealing with a lens, a positive value here is not telling us which side of the lens the image is on. It's simply telling us that the image is in fact a real image. Next, let's use the magnification equation to solve for the magnification of this image. And this magnification is negative, which means the image is inverted. And last, let's go through and solve for the actual height of the image. Using the magnification and the height of the object, we find the image is negative two centimeters. Again, that negative simply means that the image is inverted. 
So in this problem, we've drawn a ray tracing diagram for an object which has been placed in front of a lens. We've seen that the principal ray is refracted as it travels through the lens and passes through one of the focal points, whereas the focal ray passes through the other focal point and then is refracted parallel to the principal axis. We've calculated the image position and we've seen that when dealing with an object in front of a lens, a positive image position means the image is going to appear on the opposite side of the lens as the object. We've also calculated the magnification as well as the image height. And on that note, that's all for now.